Elite Facts presents seven fascinating facts about the Old West. Seven. Multiculturalism. Name one Western film that stars an African American protagonist that isn't Django Unchained or Blazing Saddles. If you know of any, let us know in the comments. However, for the most part, the classic Hollywood picture of the West involves white, all-American tough guys teaming up with or fighting other white American tough guys. So you'll get a few black people in there, maybe a handful of Mexicans and the odd Irishman for comedic purposes. However, it was predominantly true-blooded Americans, right? Nope. Like late 19th century New York, the Wild West was a hotbed of multiculturalism, with people of all nationalities vying for some room. Rock Springs in Wyoming counted as many as 56 nationalities in a population of under 10,000. Slovakians, Finns, Norwegians, Germans, Ottomans, Swedes, and Chinese all poured into the South and Midwest, an influx that only increased with the California Gold Rush. The image of the Old West as a bedrock of American values is a Hollywood holdover from a time when casting non-American voices and faces was pretty much a no-go. 6. Camels At no point in his cinematic career did John Wayne ride a camel. But guess what? If he had to, it would have been totally legit. See, the Southwest United States used to be home to hundreds of feral camels, and it was all thanks to our meddling government. In 1855, Congress assigned $30,000 for the buying and shipping of camels from Egypt. The idea was that a bunch of grumpy dromedaries would fare better in the scorching Southwest than horses, making long survey missions easy. By 1857, the Army had 70 camels, and early experiments were looking good. And then Civil War broke out. In the chaos that followed, a number of camels managed to escape into the wild, where they did what any other wild animal does – they bred like crazy. For nearly 100 years, feral camels were a part of Texas wildlife, with the last sighting reported in 1941. That's right, in your grandparents' lifetime, the United States was home to wild camels. 5. Gun Control Wow, guns in the Wild West? You don't say. Yeah, it's pretty much common knowledge that guns were a big part of the Wild West. Everyone and their mother had a gun. Hell, just look at Back to the Future Part 3 as an example. Yes, it's just a film, but pick any Western film and you'll pretty much have an accurate representation of what the West was like back then. After all, if you're visiting somewhere like Deadwood or Dodge City, you better be ready for trouble. Except carrying a gun in Dodge was more likely to land you in trouble. When the local government was formed, the first law passed was to prohibit the carrying of firearms. The gunfight at the OK Corral kicked off because Wyatt Earp was trying to enforce that law. And Dodge wasn't a one-off. Wichita and Tombstone both enacted similar laws and enforced them hard. According to that link back there, the second most common cause of arrest in the Old West was illegally carrying a firearm, meaning sheriffs weren't messing around when it came to gun control. Somehow, we've gotten to the point that modern-day Tombstone actually has less restrictive gun laws than its supposedly lawless Old West self. 4. Native American Culture Before the Europeans came to do some farming, we're told America was a great big empty land. Sure, there was an indigenous culture, but the continent was basically a blank canvas. Except it wasn't. Far from being just a bunch of ragtag tribes, Native Americans may have numbered as many as 100 million when Columbus first missed India by a few thousand miles. Although a devastating plague wiped out about 90% of the population before the pilgrims arrived, at least a million still remained. And they were damn sophisticated. Far from just giving each other cool names and sporting funky headgear, native culture was all about extensive agriculture, opening up new trade routes across the continent, and building America's first city. Then we showed up, and any chance of recovering from that super plague was swept away on a tide of smallpox, STDs, and genocide. 3. Violence Again, it's pretty common knowledge that the Wild West was incredibly violent. However, whenever watching Western films, we seem to just switch off and take it for granted. We don't really analyze how brutal the West really was. Shootouts, bank robberies, highly choreographed bar brawls. If we know anything about the frontier, it's that it was one hell of a violent place. Or was it? 
Although still a violent time period, it turns out the popular image of the Old West as a place where manly men solved their differences by shooting those differences in the face simply isn't true. People were more likely to cooperate than fight. In a harsh and lawless world, it was better to side with your neighbor for mutual benefit than to start shooting. Bank robberies, too, were virtually unheard of. One estimate places the number at about a dozen for the entire frontier period. Then you have the low homicide rates. The highest annual body count Tombstone ever experienced? Five. From 1870 to 1885, Dodge City and Wichita had murder rates of 0.6 per year. However you cut it, daily cowboy life was nowhere near as violent as we've been led to think. Two. Outlaws. Billy the Kid, Wild Bill Hickok, Jesse James, these names defined the Wild West. These men were so badass that their names still conjure images of macho men striking matches off their stubble, instead of lying egomaniacs with girly voices. Yep, turns out not all of them were as tough as they said. When Buffalo Bill started his Wild West touring plays, Wild Bill joined only to get fired for sounding like a girl. Still, that's probably how he got his moniker, killing people who trash-talked his sissy lisp, right? Not exactly. The whole Bill part was a reference to his gravity-defying monster nose, as in it stood for Duck Bill. Other outlaws suffered similar manliness deficits. Jesse James was so vain that he left press releases at the scene of his robberies telling everyone how awesome he was. But the king of talking crap had to be Billy the Kid. In his lifetime, the kid was known for killing over 20 people. In reality, it was more like four. Basically, he was the Old West equivalent of that guy you always meet at parties who won't stop talking about the fights he's been in, only somehow sadder. 1. Cowboys The cowboy is the absolute embodiment of everything frontier-related. A Stetson-rocking gunslinger with an absolute moral code, a tough exterior, and an even tougher interior, facing down the empty American wilderness with a steely gaze and a rugged jaw. Only they were nothing like that. See, the job of cowpuncher, as they would call themselves, was tough, dirty, working-class work. Most of these guys were surly illiterates who got drunk on the weekends, started fights, and spent a month or two in jail. None of them dressed like Clint Eastwood or John Wayne or any of the typical Hollywood cowboys. They wore practical clothes for getting mucked up in and mostly looked like homeless people. Far from being moral, they were known to be obnoxious, and most of them had a terminal case of STD. Oh, and things had a tendency to get pretty broke back. In 1949, a study of rural sexuality concluded that there was a, quote, fair amount of sexual contact among the older males in rural western areas. While old poems from the frontier era are full of references to men being super gay for one another. So Butch and Sundance's epic bromance may have just been, you know, a standard epic romance. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.